Uh, good morning. Good morning again. Huh? Yeah. Uh, let us uh, let us pray. Our Father, use me and all your children here in this room today to advance your kingdom to save and to rescue the sinners from sins and spiritual death. So Lord, anoint my lips as I proclaim your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My sermon topic today is God to the rescue, learning from Esther. And uh, it's based on the chapter that you have just heard, but I will still read briefly. You know, verse 3, this was when the king's decree went out, went out to the Jews. You know the Jews in the provinces from eastern, in fact from East India to all the way to Egypt. Such a wide range under Persian Empire. So the king's decree has gone out to the Jews. That decree was to put to death the Jews. Uh, the Jews, you know, the Jews they were exiled during the Babylonian uh, uh, time, and Persian Empire took over Babylonian. That is how what happened in this situation. So, in every province where the Jews were, this to in every province to which the edict, that means the decree, an order of the king came, and there was great mourning when the Jews heard uh, among the Jews with fasting. They fast, hoping and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Verse 16, verse 14 is when um, Mordecai, the leader, told Queen Esther what was happening in the province. Then this Mordecai telling Queen Esther this, because the time Queen Esther not so keen as if to help. So he said this to her, for if you remain silent, sometimes we remain silent also for many things, huh? relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish too. And who knows? But that you have come to your royal position for such a time like this, such a time needs her. Verse 15. Is Esther then replied to Mordecai? Actually, Mordecai was her cousin. No? So he asked Mordecai, Hey, go! Gather together all the Jews who are in Susa. Susa was a capital city at that time, huh? capital city. Um, provinces is all outside. And fast for me, fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. Looks like the key word is fast, right? When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. You know, I still remember very well. Forty over years ago, when I was in medical school, the time Dr. Yao already left the medical school, towards the middle, okay, I was in courtship. Of course, the time my girlfriend, now of course my wife. So as Christians, we pray. Always serious pray, but nothing happened. As if nothing happened. So I took a bold step. In one of the term holidays, you know, at that time we didn't come back to term holidays, we stay. Uh, uh, a ticket was very expensive, so we stay. So in one of the term holidays, I went up to Ipoh, where my, where my girlfriend was, where my wife is still, and went boldly, took action to see the serious father. Not a mother, serious father. So, no, he's a serious father. The rest was history. In fact, I become one of the favorite, or in fact, I was a favorite son in law after that. 
talk to the father, serious father. In fact, if you look at the text here, that was what Queen Esther did. Bold enough, took action. He, she went to see the king. She fasted. She did more. Lah, huh? I just pray. She did more. Fasted. When? Despite not allowed to do so. That was what Queen Esther was doing. At that time, Queen Esther, you read last month, right? Queen Esther was the book that we used last time in the Daily Living Water. I'm sure many of you are using. You know how God was using her and Mordecai to save, to do a very important task, to save the Jews, to save her people. You see, actually, only towards the end, we saw the fighting. We saw uh, some killings, use of swords. That was towards the end. In fact, the, the Jews were more of defending uh, because of enemies attacked them. The whole process, what did Queen Esther and Mordecai do? What steps they took in order to achieve the end results. You know, it was a happy ending. Two challenges here, isn't it? First thing, Esther has to have access to the king. You know, at that time, it's a very strange type of situation, isn't it? The king won't allow anyone to pay courtesy visit to him. Even the wife, Queen Esther, not allowed. But you think of it, it's currently also true, isn't it? Unless the king invite, then you, we can't simply go and see. Second thing is, you see, once the decree was out from the king, that decree cannot be reversed already. So, Queen Esther has to find how to convince to write another decree, that decree to handle the first decree. That's why at the end, still there was killing, is it? Because the Jews were defending. So the, the, the king. So these are the two things. You think of it, it's complete. Not possible to do, impossible to do. It's very difficult task, isn't it? First to gain access, then to convince King how could be able to do it. What steps then? Queen Esther and Mordecai, what took? And that actually is my sermon focus. Three things. Three things Queen Esther or Mordecai took. One. They fast together. Two, bonus with active steps. Three, they were making sacrifices. They were making sacrifices. Fourth point is more of application. Are we practicing prayer and fast bonus and or and or making sacrifices? You see, uh, here you see Mordecai, uh, Esther fast. In, in the verse 16, he told, she told Mordecai, Go, gather together all the Jews and Susa and fast for me. He would, do not eat or drink three days, night, and I and my attendants will fast. I and my attendants will fast. You see the word fast, uh, used in this book, Esther, carry the same meaning as the fast and prayer and fast and petition used in Nehemiah and Ezra. They are all post-exile. They are at the same times. So it gather the same meaning. Meaning to say, like in Nehemiah, verse 4, chapter 1. When I heard this thing, when Nehemiah heard this thing, he sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed. Heard what things? The war, isn't it? You all know about broken war. Oh, he fasted and prayed. Ezra, on the journey home, oh, was so tough journey, isn't it? He said, so we fast a petition of God about this, and he answered our prayer. You see, uh, the fast used in Esther was, I think, as close as we can, or a clue or indication that God ever mentioned in the book. You know, God never mentioned in the book. But probably this is as close as you can. Fast, fasting, Queen Esther, fasting. It, it despite the presence of God all over in all the events, all over in Esther, presence of God is was there. But God's name was not mentioned in the book. Interesting, huh? Therefore, 
fasting, whether with or with prayer use here, in these all three settings, simply means abstinence, abstinence, or usually from food for a prescribed, prescribed time. That time can be few hours. That's why sometimes we fast few hours. Maybe one morning we don't we don't eat or drink. We can be prescribed time. Of course, in Esther, it's three days, three nights. Oh, it's really tough. Three days, three nights. And some will say, no food, no drink. I think Dr. Yao, in the past, oh, we did fast three days when wherever tea was around. Oh, three days, three nights. Oh, but we still drink. Sometimes we tau jet boon. Oh, didn't finish. Um, so it's not easy. So you can easily see here why no food, no drink. So that in order to pray, in order to pray to or petition to God, God is involved. God is involved in the book. And often oh, there was repentance and mourning. Or oh, they go one step further, wear sackcloth, ashes, imply mourning, imply severe grief. And what does that mean? Ultimate implication is this. They now have to ask, submit themselves, surrender to God. Please God, help us. Help them. Now they need the help because it's so difficult, impossible to do anything. Something serious coming. That is essentially what, why here you see fast. More than that, they fast. Okay, so now I put in bracket prayer. They fast together. No fast alone, no? Fast together, you see, eh? this is important features. Fast together. In, es uh, in, in Esther verse 16, eh? go gather together all more. Oh, people who are in Susa at the time capital, as I said, they are not fasting yet. All the provinces already doing that. And fast for me. Do not eat for three days and night. I and my attendants, his hermit, uh, I and my attendant will fast as you do. In fact, at that time in the province, uh, already the decree went out. The Jews already were fasting. You see again here, among the Jews. Among the Jews. And number two, Many, you see, many lay in sick clothes. So you not notice that uh, Esther was not fasting alone. Sometimes we say we pray alone, oh, quite easy. She is saying what? Fasting and pray together, far from, from, the, from it. Esther immediately want to gather together, pray together, fast together, all the people together things fasting and fasting together that is the stress that is the emphasis together how often do we do this way we do fast we do pray at home probably the most we do with our family not often we pray together of course I know no, you know you I know you ought to, to, to pray together even after this maybe uh, uh, if you look at all the churches prayer especially the English district prayer you know, coming together oh, not, not easy right uh, I think you all do better after church pray all the people here pray together maybe we must I must say thank God lah, in the way we Malaysia Sarawak we no calamity no major calamities there may be no major uh, time for us together to pray like 7-11 in US where everyone and then come together and pray this opportunity Press a lot in that in that sense it was said uh, when one faced with major commodity or important tasks or important or difficult tasks to handle it would be good to surround ourselves surround ourselves with who prayer where everyone can come together to pray all our bodies come 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 we meet together pray and even better fast together that is perhaps we may need to do more lah, huh? we may need to do more not just alone yes yeah, good enough but we can do better you see there are four th four situations in our calendar 
in our practice in Methodist generally we encourage people to come so you see there is biblical basis for asking for encouraging people to come together and pray and fast you see the Thursday prayer meeting you all are not, not have because of the distance but you all do oh, after worship so good pray together stay back and pray together we all always struggle with people coming to pray probably this one of the best nights on a Thursday prayer evening usually you know it may just end up 15 people uh, 10 people 15 people 20 people those some coming in zoom pray united you heard oh, it will always circulate around but how many of us really want to seriously go through all the items and pray together isaka even though this is prayer chain but basically also all, all our methodist uh, our people pray on a thursday until friday the isaka i'm sure every i hope more people you all are very much involved also Methodist prayer Sunday, every month how often are we really also participating in it we have to ask ourselves too so we need more attention this is something we can learn from Esther her immediate response was come pray and pray together the, the force of having coming together and pray I think it's something worth Oh, as I said, there is biblical basis uh, on coming or fasting together. Second feature, bonus, and add on it. You see what Esther in verse 16 said? Esther said, I will go to the king even though it's against the law. Just now I mentioned, she cannot just go like that. If the king saw somebody in the courtyard, just like that, he would ask the God to put them to death. But Queen Esther said, I will go even against the practice. She there. In fact, very soon she went at the courtyard. I will come back to that again. She acted boldly. Just now I gave an illustration. Just an illustration. Huh? I boldly ate on it. I went to see my, of course, my late father-in-law. Huh? The problem with us, not all the time, quite often I would say, we are as guilty too. We no problem with prayer. But sometimes we may need to act on it. Not every time. Of course, sometimes we wait to hear from God. But sometimes we wait to hear we forgot. Huh? We pray, but we are not bold enough to act on it. So as I say, you know, sometimes we pray, huh? we know somebody in hospital. We pray, yeah. Then after that forgot, even if you pass away, you also forgot. We forgot at least text to him and when he come back how he is or pay a visit, add on it. And I think this is important, important lesson also that we can learn from Esther, right? Add on it. Respond and add on it. Not just fast and go away. The third feature is willing to make sacrifice. You know, yeah? The real chance actually she could put, be put to death because she disobeyed the practice or the law. She still went, she still want to go in. Huh? But for the sake of the people, for the sake of her people, for the sake of the Jews, she said, I am willing to make sacrifice even to the point of I am willing to die to take risks and making sacrifice. Here, I think we can post for a while. Something, uh, something rang a bell, isn't it? Why? Who? Oh, Jesus, right? Jesus making sacrifice. And Jesus willing to die. And I can say, in this incident, Jesus is much, much more than Esther. Why? Because Jesus not only died, Esther did not die, made sacrifice, Jesus really died. And Jesus, not just his, uh, his own race only, Jesus saved all, so that we all are saved. Esther only, the, the Jews only, her own people. 
So Jesus, because of Jesus, he made sacrifice, he died for us on the cross, so we could have, and when we repent, we could have eternal life. We live again. We don't die, actually. We live again. Actually, Paul also encourages us to die is to gain huh, for the Lord. It's very tough, isn't it? We said making sacrifice. Are you willing to make sacrifice to die for the Lord? Not easy. If, but this way, when you could say, ah, can, can, can. But when real time comes, may not be easy. But we can sacrifice, we can make sacrifice in many other ways. Are not necessary to say, oh, it must die. Many other ways we come to that, like time, energy, spend time, make sacrifice. So with these three features in place, uh, what happened, Esther? The prayer of fasting, uh, take action of both, willing to make sacrifice, she submitted herself to God. She submitted, and with that, she know God will help her to win. Okay, to see the king. And you see, uh, we see this drama unfold. We need to know a little bit of this drama. Why? Because we want to learn from this so that we can appreciate how God acted, how God worked, how God responds. God used Esther. And God never abandoned. God did not abandon Esther and Mordecai and the people. God will not abandon us. Similarly, I would think God will not abandon us, our church. No. Here, you see how difficult a situation God, no, not abandon. God's presence was all here. And here God responding is what we saw. His perfect timing. His response was the perfect timing in this case. What, what do I mean? You see, uh, while in courtyard, Queen Esther while in courtyard, very briefly in courtyard, the king saw her. Instead of asking the guard, go. Why? The king was in good mood. Is it by coincidence? God made the king good mood. Come, Esther. And with that, Esther can able to make appointments for first banquet and even later for the second banquet. To ask him and Haman, the bad man, because Queen Esther wants to do something, handle this bad man, Haman. Mordecai, good man, Haman, bad man. But Haman was the, at that time, was the right hand man of the king. So, after the first banquet, okay, that night, the king, again in good timing, because this thing only happened after the first banquet. He dreamed. The king dreamed. Dream what? Oh, actually, he, he, he realized many years ago, two eunuch, two eunuch wanted to assassinate him. Wanted to assassinate him, want to kill him. And somebody saved him. Give him warning, and that man was Mordecai. Coincidence? No. How God put it in a way, as I said, timing. And he wanted to reward him. All by giving him the robes and what? Uh, host. That means giving him authority now. There in, again in a good timing. Perfect timing. Harmon coming. Harmon think that. Oh. Uh, king wanted to reward him this and that, make him even higher. But king actually wanted to, at the end, reward Mordecai. Haman knew in trouble. So in second banquet now, in the perfect timing, what happened? The queen now, Queen Esther, directly point out, Haman, this is a bad man who actually tricked the king to issue the decree to kill the Jews. And now she, re she released, uh, she made known she was also the Jew, wanted to kill them. So the king was very upset, went out. And then when he came back again in perfect timing, what happened? Haman, the bad man, actually was falling onto 
the cows all through the king and the king said what you want to molest my queen put him to death immediately on the gallows that gallows was already there just he brought it wanted to ask him to hang who oh, Mordecai is it a perfect timing or you think it is coincidence because God responded in her case it's all perfect timing God will respond to us in many other ways not necessarily timing so you know at the end second decree was ordered second decree went out the king uh, Mordecai and the queen is able to convince the king to write the second decree to handle the first decree as I said cannot reverse one the king cannot say now I cancel this no so that the second decree the Jews can able to assemble and handle that's why you see the only the last part there was fighting and some killing and of course finally the Jews also oh huh? okay kill all the Haman's children too ability to complete a difficult task brothers sisters is what we learn from Esther it was made possible by God because God used Esther in this here you see Esther help Esther so that Esther can fast uh, at all actions willing to make sacrifice and God responded here is a perfect timing God will use us God will use you wherever you are in whatever position not necessarily Queen's position God will use us God will not abandon us just he did not abandon Esther so long as we remain faithful we may not fast every day we may not be bored every day willing but well we can still do something willing to make sacrifice not necessarily our life it can be time energy or even our wealth to advance to save God's kingdom to save sinners from sins and uh, and spiritual death the most important thing is we must remain faithful brothers sisters we must remain faithful like Esther remain faithful and plead to God God will respond my last point are we then faithfully do one of the three at least or all three prayer be bold and willing to make sacrifices I must say yes huh? everyone all of you who are here for last many years you all are trying very hard I know some also feel sad huh? um, uh, uh, things may not turn out good but this is a talent this is a, as I say you look at it wow impossible task this is what I think we can learn from Esther oh, let us be honest with ourselves too oh, sometimes we, we, we as I said we don't do all the time oh, prayer fasting together we may not be bored enough we don't act for some situation instead we just leave it like that or we may not have made enough sacrifice we are sacrificing but may not have enough make enough sacrifice as I said we do not need to make sacrifice at the expense of life can be in so many other ways let me just share this testimony before I end when one is faithful making willing to make sacrifice together this is more to encourage one another also we encourage one another as we all actually I always say huh, living hope and we all have one DMC we are struggling together we are struggling together we will help one another so let me see some yesterday's event about maybe our church I still remember this I like this photo because I keep 2016-2017 when we, when we also plant church oh, you all later we have no place to go so we use Jindal church we rent Jindal church and we have we just rent one room opposite become our office and also our prayer meeting that means Thursday we get a 
At that time, as I said, in a way, Reverend T, Spearhead, the Esther Fast, and West Lion. Remember West Lion? I think many of us still practice West Lion Fast. After Thursday meeting, Friday you have morning, you fast until 3. Uh, many of us did that. We, we, we may end our fast by 11, so we just miss the morning. But we do it together, we did it together. Seriously. Some of us still doing. You know, we rent one room opposite Jintao. We are using Jintao Church. Here, this is the sanctuary. We rent that, and we rent a classroom for the Sunday school. You see, how, how much sacrifice, and we also acted quite boldly. So you see what happened. Of course, now, if you, if you come and visit, I think Dr. Yao come and preach a few times, William also, and the pastor. Well, just a little bit more people, more robust. Lah. But we, we all, now we have our well, simple shop house. What is the difference, you see? And why the difference? I still believe. Because at that time, maybe we don't do it so often now. At that time, we all pray. We, we also fasted. We were on our knees, cry on our knees. We have nothing. And we find all the new ways to help the church to grow, making a lot of sacrifice, like you all, same. And we are bold and also took action. You see, any, anyone that come from the church or from other churches or new, we, we quickly visit them, assess them, and ask them to serve ready. Even they are young, so long as the heart is there, they are Christian. We do not say, ah, yeah, because you are young, you don't serve. We already bring them in straight away. Even the LCEC, we quickly change to their own people. At Jalan Son, they all the time so Jalan Son. Jesus will not abandon us. Jesus will not abandon you and the church. Jesus did not abandon with Queen Esther, Mordecai, and the people, Jews. Jesus will not, of God, I say, of God will not abandon Esther. Jesus will not abandon you and me and the church. The church doing God's will will grow. Will continue to grow. Let me encourage you. Let God use you like he, like God used Esther. In a very difficult situation, like you are also facing difficult situation, trust God. He will respond. He will respond in different way. He responded in perfect timing to Esther, but he will respond different way, maybe, to you and to us. Conclusion, back to my sermon topic, uh, God to the rescue, learning from Esther. Just remember, I already said actually, we church may not rescue physically people of any particular race but we may rescue many sinners right that's our job here from their sins and from the spiritual death that's why we are here that's why jesus asks us to be here that's why we are continue where jesus stopped continue to advance his kingdom continue to do what we can provided what we are willing. You are willing. He will not abandon us. Therefore, let us rededicate ourselves to Jesus. Allow Jesus to use us. As I said, no need to be in high position, in any position. No need to be Esther position. Any point. Don't be like Esther initially, a little bit not keen to help until Mordecai tell her, tell her if you don't help, Somebody may take over to help, and anyway, you will be also in trouble. Verse 14. Let God use us in whatever ways, and offer our life in whatever ways. There are many ways, right? Oh, as I said, oh, time, oh, comfort, 
uh, doing good, not necessary, and God will respond. For let Esther and her people, like Esther and Hepper, and, and her people, Esther willing to offer offer her life to God for her rest sake. Are we willing to offer our life in many other ways? Amen.